Well, it is flattering. It is indeed to me an achievement to be published in English. Uh, I can reach a bigger public this way and uh, I'm definitely happy with that. I try to write in the best language I can. I write in Italian, which is my language, and uh, I'm very attentive to use the good level of language one needs when writing a book. Using a language, writing a language is, is like playing a musical instrument. And to make it tell what, all what it can tell, you need to play it in the correct way. It is very important for a writer to master his own language. And in this way, you make it more easy to translate it. When I don't write, actually I read, but I never happen to read the authors that are with me tonight. Nonetheless, I'm planning to read them because I'm discovering them now and I see they are, like me, the product of the European cultural variety. Diego, Omkora. We've um, we've Cora. met before. Yes, we launched each. We, I have to say we launched each other's book. I launched your book. I haven't written one. I haven't had time. How do you have time? You are uh, in Brussels. Are, these are my last three days actually, because I will be working for the Italian presidency from the first of July, and well, I think uh, writing will be over for a while. I hope but, not. But uh, I have been introduced uh, as a bureaucrat, so I will be a bureaucrat. Until okay. The end. Well, we, we may need to explain what your real job is to your real job. It depends which you see as your real job, of course. But um, tell tell the audience what you do for well, we, a living. <laughs> we finance culture with uh, little money and uh, many difficulties. Uh, we finance cultural projects involving languages because we promote multilingualism. And uh, specifically in my job, we support universities that train interpreters and translators. So, well, uh, I am at the core of the uh, language uh, issue in, in Europe. Now, you speak yourself, you speak several languages, I know. Um, and no, I don't. No. Ah, well, you pretend you do. Um, you, you give a very good, very good impression of doing. But you, you've also created your own language. And if I don't ask you this question, somebody else will. So yes, we need to talk do. about Europanto. In fact, I was going to introduce you as um, Willkommen sur le stage, Signor Marani, which, as you will all know, is an example of Europanto. Um, Muchas bedankes por tiny words. Gracias, mi <laughs> Can you please explain to everyone here what Europanto is? Because it's actually quite intelligent. Europanto is a kind of language. It's a rather a joke. Uh, <laughs> but you write the books in this uh, lingua, uh, language. Exactly. Lingua. Yeah. Aber a joke remain, and a uh, joke was intended for because Europanto necessitate kind of study to speak. <laughs> Io now facilmente understand the Europanto, but <laughs> you never get studied habe Europanto. <laughs> that is the proof that you can languages spoken uh, also uh, if tu también know it habe get studied. <laughs> uh, my message is uh, improviste and mix languages and do zal siempre understood the esse. Uh, to, be, to be honest, to be honest, Diego, we can't even master English very well in this country, let alone foreign languages. So let's stop the uh, the foreign languages now, because thankfully all the books here have been translated into English. It makes our lives a bit easier. We are pretty bad at languages, as you know, in this country. Yes, I'm know. going to give you a free moment here to to, uh, to you can you can you can make a pronouncement. As the European elections are coming up, say something meaningful. <laughs> Well, voting, think of Europe, not of your own country, for once. This is my message, a message that, that our politicians uh, quickly forget. Uh, but these are European elections, not national ones. This is a very, um, how should I say, serious and uh, engaged message from a Euro enthusiast. I know we are not so many, uh, at least in this country, but uh, we resist. <laughs> Thank you. I did think at least one person should speak about Europe, which is, which is great. Now let's talk about your book 
Um, and first of all, just a very quick reminder that when we met the very first time a few years ago, here at European Literature Night, in fact, three years ago, we launched an absolutely phenomenal book called New Finnish Grammar. And um, it was not about grammar at all. Um, it was basically a little bit about Finland. But um, the, this book, as you probably know, went on to, um, to make make you lots of money, I hope, um, but also to be translated all over the world. It was shortlisted for the um, Independent Foreign Fiction Prize and did extremely well. And um, then you had Last of the Vostiaks, which was another wonderful book translated into English, also about language in some way. And then now we have this amazing book, which the judges and I um, are utterly convinced will blow you away. It's called God's Dog. Um, now, this is also a play on words. Um, it's a palindrome. So, palindrome. So, tell us about this title, because if you read it backwards and forwards, it's the same. Well, yes. How can I be serious now after the, such an introduction? <laughs> this is a serious novel about a very serious subject, which is the influence of religion in society. I imagined uh, uh, Italy in a near future, where the Pope has taken power, and the Catholic dogma has become our national law, some kind of Sharia law, but of a Catholic brand. <coughs> yes, you might laugh about this, but uh, in Italy we too often feel the pressure of the Vatican on important uh, social and moral issues like euthanasia, homosexuality, abortion. We feel they want us to see these things in their own way, and they want to take away our freedom to choose as free people. So my novel might seem not plausible. Uh, I think it is. Um, I think it's frighteningly plausible. It, uh, yes, uh, in a way, yes. And uh, my God's dog is a cop, is a Vatican secret agent, a fanatic, uh, whose task is to track down euthanasiasts, abortionists, homosexuals, all the enemies of the Catholic Church. Uh, but he gets into trouble because uh, he's got very uh, unusual methods of working and uh, not appreciated by the hierarchy. Working in a bureaucracy, I know what the problem is. Um, all these to uh, attract the attention of the reader on these moral issues uh, which are uh, everyday's problem. I mean, the suffering of the terminal ill people, the uh, uh, homosexuality uh, issue. Uh, homosexuals are still today stigmatized in many countries, even in Europe. And this abortion issue is still a very uh, actual one uh, that cannot be decided in a um, quick and superficial way but on which there must be a public debate and not just the rules imposed by a morality that is a religious one. Uh, these things might seem obvious to you because you live in a free country. Uh, in Italy, it is not always the case and sometimes, as you said, it is scaring. Um, today's Pope is very reassuring, but if he is not poisoned, uh, he might change some things in the Vatican. But we cannot forget that for the, the Catholic Church, the dogma cannot be changed. The dogma is sacred. You cannot change the rules. And um, in the same way, the Pope cannot, out of the blue, decide that homosexuality is not a sin anymore. So, well, we shall wait and see. For the moment, I leave to the readers the rest of my... Uh, detective story. I mean, this it is your first detective story, your first true detective story. Actually, no. My, really? My first... In English? That's uh, the well, first in English, yes, def definitely, yes. But my first attempt of a book was a detective story that took place in Brussels with a, a European officer as a detective. Sounds uh, fascinating, <laughs> Diego. <laughs> It'll come, yes. <laughs> but look, I, I think... This is an absolutely extraordinary book, and um, I think that, I, I, first of all, I wonder how on earth it was received in Italy. It is so daring. 
it, I mean, it's, it, the, the, the issues you address are, I would have said, blasphemous for the um, majority of Catholics. Well, I framed and put into the wall the review I had from the uh, Italian bishop's newspaper. <laughs> it was like an excommunication, uh, and uh, I'm almost proud of it. Uh, in Italy, it was really stigmatized and attacked, and just a few journalists had the courage to review it as a novel, as a book, uh, not as a manifesto against the church. Actually, it is not a manifesto against the church. It is a way to attract, to show that spirituality and religion uh, do not necessarily always match with the churches as institutions. Institutions mean power, uh, uh, and I know what I mean when I say this. Uh, uh, and so the church cannot be uh, um, innocent, cannot be uh, uh, protected by the, the temptation to exert its power. This is all what my book is about. It's, I mean, it, it's still, it, of course, not everybody who reads this book will know your background as a bureaucrat, so um, that's part of the reason. But I think that um, it, it's a great story as well. Uh, and this um, detective, um, who is the, you know, the Vatican's secret agent, um, Domingo Salazar, he's an extraordinary character too. He's a really interesting man, and he writes himself, he writes a diary, and he has this idea of um, biblical, a uh, Bible Koranism or Quranism. So he himself is developing a new religion to counter the, the arch conservative Catholicism. So, I mean, there are lots of intellectual ideas in, in this too. I mean, how did you initially come up with this idea of writing a book, which is, it seems completely out of the blue for you, except that you're Italian. That's the only connection I can see. <laughs> no, well, there is a hidden path there. Uh, you can link this to the uh, priest uh, I wrote about in New Finnish Grammar, and all can be explained by the fact that my father wanted to be a priest. Luckily, he gave up this idea, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but in my family, we, this is a subject, this is an issue that was, is often discussed. What is morality? What is religion? How can you be an ethical man uh, without religion? Is it possible? And uh, uh, to, to what extent the church can really be a spiritual organization. Uh, my character, Domingo Saladar, is... Uh, I tried myself to imagine uh, how I would act if I had to uh, foster uh, Catholicism and fight atheists uh, myself and be a, a Vatican cop. So I also tackled the ideological side. I mean, you must be a soldier, yes, this is true, but you also need to have ideas. Jesuits were strong because they had uh, strong ideas and principles and a philosophy behind their acts. And so I developed uh, a fanatic uh, character, sh for sure, but with some original ideas, and I hope the Pope will not take the opportunity to inspire his church by my ideas, <laughs> I mean, because it, it that can be, be dangerous. Yes. Yes. But I mean, it's interesting because you wrote this book, of course, um, in, the, in the period of Berlusconi was still in power, and, um, and of course Ratzinger was, and you've sort of slightly been superseded by events, really, haven't you? You've got Matthew yes, Renzi yes. and... Yes, uh, well, and Ratzinger nice went book. away too early. Yes. But, uh, you mean well, the book would have been more successful, do you think? If, um, uh, yes, in, definitely, yes. This new pope is spoiling my work, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> we're, extre we're extremely sorry about that. Well, there's, there's one thing that, uh, uh, for example, Italians never do. Uh, uh, all, almost all Italians say they are Catholic. But I, I'm sure very few of them ever read the Catholic um, catechism because they would, would be frightened if they had, uh, in the Catholic Catechism, uh, and I'm not inventing this, I'm quoting this in my book, but this is true because I read it, uh, the death penalty is accepted in some cases. Uh, to say nothing of, the, uh, of homosexuality being considered a, a disease. Uh, this is, I think, unacceptable. Uh, to believe in something and to say you are a believer of a religion without knowing it. Uh, my uh, detective, on the contrary, 
is a, a pure Catholic, a true one, and he believes to every single line of Joseph Ratzinger catechism. And this is uh, his uh, fascination and uh, his... Uh, well, it is an extremely funny book, as well as being a, a very erudite book as well. And the language is, as always, with your books, absolutely wonderful. And the translation is fantastic, too. You're going to read um, a short passage for us from the book. Um, and this is it's called God's Dog. Um, it's by Diego. And it's been published by Daedalus. And it's been translated once again by the wonderful Judith Landry. Atheist is a catch-all term. If you have grown up among churches, you are not the same sort of atheist as you would be if you'd grown up among mosques. Everyone is an atheist in terms of their own God. Some religions guard against atheism better than others. Protestantism, for example, fairly welcomes it in. Anyone who has been capable of contesting one set of dogma will not accept another, and anyone who starts to think rationally about God will be an atheist. But atheism will not be eliminated by persecuting atheists. It is the sons who have to be targeted. The fathers are already lost. That is why in Holland, we have forged an alliance with the imams. We are experimenting with mixed services, studying the psalms and the surahs together, though unbeknownst to the powers that be, for obvious reasons. For them, everything is a matter of outward form. They would not understand. Indeed, I would be in trouble if they found out. For the moment I have to act in secret, but time will prove me right. The old generation of theologians will be swept aside by the new priests of Bible Koranism. The powers that be cannot conceive of such a phenomenon. They will become aware of it only when it is already rampant. This is the new frontier of globalized faith. The churches will which will survive will be those which stand firm against competition in the new market of religions. If they do not want to be swept away by the new forms of evangelism, the new sects and scientism, our leaders must accept change. Furthermore, this is the only possible future. The three religions of the book must make common cause no one will have any difficulty acknowledging the Pope of Rome when there is just one faith. But in order to bring about this revolution, we must start now. We must make our presence felt in schools, in the street, through all manner of networks and associations. A Westerner who goes into a mosque is a triumph for us too. He has become a believer. He has set reason aside. No religion is better than Islam at cloaking faith in reason. Muslims use reason to reveal the intelligent order which pervades creation, and that is the way to disarm science. We stand around wrangling over the sacraments and women priests. We can't agree on anything, not even on the emblem of the cross. They simply kneel down beneath the crescent and then all pray in the same way. I observed our atheists during loads. There they are, dressed up as believers for decency's sake, possibly even with a rosary in their hand. The church makes do with appearances. It is far too long since it inspired martyrdom. Thank you.